thank you so much for everybody that's set up for the ladies that have done the music this morning. They did a fantastic job for uh, also for Andrew and, and Leonard who have been. Let me just say thank you for everyone that's been praying for me and my family. Everybody's feeling good. We're feeling a lot better. Just waiting for now the uh, test to say that we are all clear. So we're being extra cautious today, just being careful. But uh, feel 100%, feel like everything is like normal. But, you know, we can't be too careful in these times. Having said that, let's make sure we pray for everyone that is in our church family who's been dealing with COVID. And not just COVID, but other things. I know uh, my friend uh, Leonard back there has a funeral coming up. We have some other people that have been going through some, some real difficult times. Some have uh, some things to do with COVID, some don't. So just want to say thank you to everyone that's been praying for me personally, but I remind you to please pray for everyone in our church family. Uh, a lot of people have been, uh, been sick. It's just been a tough time. And so as far as moving forward the next few Sundays, I'd probably say just kind of keep your ears open, keep your eyes on um, watching and see what we're going to do. I don't know what we'll, we'll do each week. Right now it's our plan to be back outside together next week. Uh, just like normal, but uh, we'll see what is safest. We don't want to do anything that we think may not be safe for our church family. So uh, so stay tuned, and we'll let you know what's going to happen there. Um, <clears throat> if you have your Bibles, we're going to turn to Acts chapter 27. Today is going to be our last sermon in our Acts study. We've been studying the book of Acts chapter by chapter, and next week we'll start a new study for the month of January on wisdom, wisdom, and, and specifically the book of Proverbs. There are 31 days in the month, and I'm going to ask each member if they would commit to reading one chapter of Proverbs a day. So on January 1st, you read Proverbs chapter 1. On January 2nd, you read Proverbs chapter 2, and so on. And together, we will kind of just kind of break down and study a beautiful text mostly written from uh, by Solomon uh, on wisdom and looking how God wants us to be wise in 2021. I'm excited about the new year. Maybe I'm more excited about the old year going away. I don't know which one, but I'm excited we're going to have some uh, great things. God's doing great things, and so I'm excited to see what God's going to do. Uh, but let's open in prayer today um, before we read our first 12 verses of Acts chapter 27. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for allowing us to be together today. I thank you for the scripture that we're going to study. I thank you for a man like Paul who showed us, gave us an example of being completely committed to listening to you and listening to you alone. And I pray, Lord, that we would learn how to listen to you better this year. Lord, for those that are struggling, for those that are hurting, for those that are sick or have lost loved ones or just going through just difficult times. Lord, I pray that this sermon this morning would be an encouragement to them, but that it would be a challenge also, and that it would challenge me, and it would challenge everyone who's listening this morning. And again, Lord, I pray for those that are sick at home. I pray for uh, their healing, and I pray for us as we make decisions moving forward in the weeks to come in our ministries here for our church and school and Bible studies and, and our Spanish services and everyone. Lord, I just pray that, uh, that you would help us make good decisions to be wise and to be um, careful how we follow and listen to you. Lord, I pray that you'd be with our, our sister, Miss Stephanie, that you'd help her to feel better, that you'd be with her and the baby and, and uh, Brother David uh, Jr. And, and uh, Lord, just that entire situation and that you'd keep them strong and, uh, and I pray that you'd just heal them. And I just pray, Lord, that you would now direct this, this sermon, that it would be the words that you once said. And I thank you for the privilege of being able to, to speak your word. In your very precious name, Lord, we pray. Amen. All right, uh, <clears throat> Acts chapter 27. Let, let me see before I, I read those verses. Let me just kind of, um, let me ask you a couple of questions here. We're going to be looking at the first 12 verses, and, and as always, I'm going to ask you to finish reading the rest of the chapter when we get done today and you have some free time this afternoon. But how do you make the difficult decisions in your life? The question again, how do you make difficult decisions? Decisions. 
You know, I just prayed about making some difficult decisions here in our ministries every week. It's always hard, especially during these COVID times. It's always difficult to know how we're going to meet, where we're going to meet, when we're going to meet, all those kind of things during COVID. It's difficult. They're, they're tough decisions. And, and in addition to those kind of decisions, each one of us have difficult decisions to make personally. You know, you make thousands of decisions and choices every single day. And so the question is, how do you make those difficult decisions that you have? Maybe now that you're a little older, Maybe you would say that you look back in your life and you regret some of the decisions that you've made in your life previously. Maybe, maybe you're even still dealing with some of the negative consequences that are a result of some bad decisions in the past. Here in Acts chapter 27, Paul is being, he's being shipped from Caesarea Philippi to Rome. He's on his way to Italy because he's, he's pleaded, he has, he has said, I want to plead my case in front of Caesar. And so he's being, he's being escorted there on the way to go see the top dog, the number one in command. And the ship that he, you're going to see him on, actually he's going to be on two or three different ships. He's going to be hopping from ship to ship. But the main ship for the story today um, is a... Um, merchant vessel and this vessel that he's on has one specific purpose and that purpose is to make money it's a merchant vessel okay and so the purpose of that ship is to make money it has cargo that it needs to get from one place to another so it can sell goods and make money that's its sole purpose and Paul is being escorted and they are kind of like, let's say, you know, hitch, hitching a ride on, on these ships, trying to get him to Rome. And so this ship that he's on, don't forget, again, don't forget, it's, its sole purpose is to make money. That's what this ship is all about. And if it doesn't sell its goods, it doesn't make any money. And the ship is full of people, you're going to see in these verses, we're going to read in a second. These, this ship is full of people who have to make a choice. They have to make a decision. And I think you'll see they make some very, very poor decisions. The only thing that, that barely, barely saves these people's lives, and I mean they get saved by the skin of their chinny chin chin. The only thing that saves their little, their, their, their lives, just barely, is the fact that they finally listen to this man of God, Paul. Now maybe you'd admit this morning that some of those poor decisions that maybe you've made in your life in the past were encouraged maybe somehow, maybe, maybe you know, influenced somehow by listening to the wrong voices in your life. Maybe you listened to the wrong people, you listened to the wrong voices, and you made some bad decisions based on some faulty information that you were given. You were listening to the wrong information. So I'm going to give you four things that I want you to kind of write down. I don't have an outline for you this morning, but, but I do have four things that I want you to write down. The first is a question, and the last three are practical applications or truths in trying to answer that question. So here's the question I want you to write down. This is the question for this morning. Who do you listen to? The question for this morning is, who do you listen to? When you're down, when you're in danger, when you're discouraged, or you're facing a problem in your life, who do you listen to? You know, there are a lot of voices. <laughs> there are a lot of voices right now vying for your attention for your uh, attention, to, to, to be able to have influence into your decisions. There's a lot of people screaming and talking to you from all different angles. And many of those voices have nothing to do with God whatsoever. There's a lot of voices out there trying to tell you what you should wear and what you should eat and where you should live and what you should think and how you should feel and, and how you should vote and what you should do. There's so many voices out there from the TV to the internet 
social media, etc. They're all screaming to you, trying to tell you how you should behave, how you should act, what you should think, trying to tell you how to make decisions in your life. And so the question is again for today, which voice are you listening to? Who do you listen to when you have to make decisions? And most importantly for today, as we get ready for a new year, I don't know about you, I'm excited for 2020 to be gone forever, right? In 2021, the question is, who will you listen to? Now you say, you may say, you may be sitting there today saying, well, I don't really listen to anyone. No, you listen to someone. You listen to someone. The question is, who is it? Who do you listen to? Let's look at the verses there in <clears throat> Acts chapter 27, and we're just going to look at the first 12 verses. And again, let me just preface this by saying, Paul is being shipped, he's being escorted all the way to Rome to speak to Caesar, to plead his case in front of the leader, the high the, the head man of the land. And so in verse 1, you see, and when it was decided that we should sail for Italy, they proceeded to deliver Paul and some other prisoners to a centurion of the Augustan cohort named Julius. And embarking in uh, this merchant ship, which was about to sail to the regions along the coast of Asia, we put out to sea, accompanied by Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, and the next day we put in at Sidon or Sidon and Julius treated Paul with consideration and allowed him to go to his friends and receive care. We'll talk about why possibly he did that in a minute. Verse 4, and from there we put out to sea again and sailed under the shelter of Cyprus because the winds were contrary. And when we had sailed through the sea along the coast of Sicilia and Pamphylia, we landed at Myra in Lycia. And there the centurion found an Alexandrian ship sailing for Italy, and he put us aboard it. And when we had sailed slowly for a good many days, and with much difficulty had arrived off Sinaitis, since the wind did not permit us to go any further, we sailed under the shelter of Crete off Salome. And with difficulty sailing past it, we came to a certain place called Fair Heavens, Fair Havens near which was the city of Elysia. And when considerable time had passed, and the voyage was now very dangerous, since even the fast was already over, Paul began to admonish them and said to them, Men, I perceive that this voyage will certainly be attended with damage and great loss, not only of the cargo and the ship, but also of our lives. But the centurion was more persuaded by the pilot, by the captain of the ship, and the captain of the ship, and by what they, than by what was being said by Paul. So let me, let me make sure I say that verse again. But the centurion was more persuaded by the pilot and the captain of the ship than by what was being said by Paul. And because the harbor was not suitable for wintering, the majority reached a decision to put out to sea from there. If somehow, if somehow, they didn't know how, just in case, if there was a chance, they could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete, facing southwest and northwest, and, and spend the winter there. Hmm. You see, Julius is um, this one that's been chosen to... Um, take Paul to, the, the, to, to Italy, to Rome. And it says there in the first couple, three verses, you see there in verse one, it says, you know, when they decided to set sail, they decided they put this, you know, man, Julius, in charge of him. And Julius's job is to make sure that he gets Paul all the way there to Caesar, okay? And it says there um, in verse three, it says the next day they put out and they, and, and they decided to uh, give to be kind to Paul. I want you to understand what is happening there. So he understands that pretty soon Paul is going to be speaking in front of Caesar. And Caesar has, of course, the power to 
kill anyone he wants to kill. He could do anything he wants. He could kill Julius. He's no, he knows what's happened to one of the uh, recent leaders who left where Paul had come from originally. Everybody knows that story. And so, you know, he'd been, he, was, he was trying to make sure that when Paul went to go speak in front of Caesar, that he had said good things, right? He's protecting his own backside. He's trying to make sure that when Paul goes to him, Paul is a Roman citizen. And so he wants to make sure that when he goes and talks to Caesar, that he says good things. So don't be too, you know, encouraged or impressed from the fact that that Caesar is going to, you know, get to talk to Paul and that Julius is going to be nice to him and let him have this time with his friends. Don't be too, you know, impressed by that. But then it says in verse 4, where I really want to start focusing the, the message this morning, is it says that the winds were against us. Okay, so not not want to sp- I don't want to spend too much time, but I got to read, and this is, uh, I was prepared for this a couple weeks ago, and, and I was reading about the, uh, the winds of that area. This very, very dangerous time. When this was being done during this festival that it, it mentions would have been the worst time for ships to be sailing in that part of the world. In fact, no ships would sail at that time. It would have been foolish. Everybody understood that the winds would come up and change um, immediately, and they were very dangerous. And it says in verse 4 that the winds were against us, but they chose to go out on the ship anyway. Now, remember, Paul and Julius, Julius is in charge of him. They're just hitching a ride from boat to boat to boat, trying to get to Caesar, right? And it says the winds were against us. So they knew that they were facing problems through verses 5 and 6. It says that they couldn't go directly where they wanted to go because the winds were so strong, Remember, no other ships would be sailing at this time, but they're on a merchant ship. Now, like I mentioned a minute ago, the merchant ship's main purpose is to make money. And and so they're trying to um, do anything they can to try to make a little extra money. They want to get to their final destination so they can sell their goods so they can make some money. Okay? Okay. And it says in verse 6 that they've, they've gotten through about to, uh, well, if you look at the, the, the map of that area, they've gotten about a third of the way there through verse 6. And then in verse 7, it says, the wind did not allow us to hold our course. Here it is again in these verses that we just read. Again, a second mention as to the fact that these storms are not letting up, that they're not going to let us get to where we want to go. Again, the wind is giving them trouble. It won't let them go forward. Again, in verse 8, it says they're going along the coast. They're trying to hide along the coast. They're hoping that, you know, the coast, you know, some of that, the winds will be blocked. And so they're trying to stay as close to the coast as they can. Uh, The further out they go, then they know the more dangerous it's going to get. And in verse 8, it says along the coast with difficulty. Here it is again and again and again. So, so far... They've, all they've seen is the increasing winds getting worse and worse, the storms getting worse and worse, but they continue ahead because, again, they're a merchant ship, and, boy, they have to make their money, right? That's all they really cared about. They keep mentioning the fact that the storms are getting worse, that issues are coming up, the pushing against them, the winds are pushing against them, but they won't, they won't stop. They keep going. They keep going. They won't listen to the warnings they won't be wise enough to look and see and say you know what we we need to stop they won't do it they won't listen to those warnings they won't they won't listen to what is around them all the wisdom that's around them they won't listen to it they just keep on going keep on going because they want to make their money that's all they can care about that's all they can think about and and they're they're ready to throw everything else throw caution to the wind to make sure that they can make their money and in verse 9 paul speaks up and he says, guys, I, I, I got to warn you. You guys got to be ready here. You, you, you guys need to think clearly here. You're not only going to lose your stuff. You're not only going to lose your ship. You're going to lose your lives if you don't make a better decision. You didn't listen to us. Again, commentators will tell you that this is a time of year where no ships sailed. The fact that they're even trying to sail shows a huge lack of wisdom, a lack of of judgment. It's, It's poor judgment. It's poor judgment on their part. But they don't care. All they care about is making a buck. And I want to go back to my question. 
Number one thought here, who are you listening to? Guys, number one, don't allow money to make you or to cause you to make bad choices in 2021. Don't let money cause you to make poor choices. Listen, don't misunderstand me. Money, I hear people misquote this every once in a while. Money is not the root of all evil, but the love of money is. That money is not a bad thing. Making money, the, the, the people on these ships, the, these, this, these merchant ship or these sailors, they, they weren't trying to do something bad in making money. The bad thing was that they were letting it become more important than anything else to them. And it clouded their judgment. And what they were listening to was the idea of making money and not what was wise or safe. Paul knows danger is coming. Because they have let money make their decisions instead of listening to this man of God. They didn't have the, the Bible, but they had a man of God there with them telling them, guys, you should not move forward. This is not wise. Today, we should be listening to the word of God. But in those days, they had a man of God. Look at verse 11 again. Look at verse 11. The centurion listens. He says, he hears, it says, the verse says that the centurion heard, Julius, he heard what Paul said. Then he turned and he looked at the captain, right? He looked at the, the, the top two sailors, the two people in charge of that boat, and he made a decision listening to them. Now, what do you think the captain and the pilot are going to want to do? I mean, the fact that he's listening to them shows a huge lack of judgment. Why, why would he listen to them instead of Paul? Of course, what, you know what they're going to say. They're, they're, the whole reason they got, the fact that they're even on the boat at that time of the year shows they've got no judgment whatsoever. It's, it's poor judgment on their part to begin with. And so he decides that he wants to listen to them rather than listen to Paul. These guys want to sell their money, and they don't care. They don't care. They're, they're willing to chance their lives, not just their boat and, and their stuff. They're willing to, to risk their lives to sell their stuff, to get this, to get their, you know, and it says basically that they just have the, a chance that possibly they'll get there safely, and they're, they're willing to take that chance. They're willing to put their lives on the line to, to see if they can make an extra buck at a time of the year when nobody is selling. Can you imagine? Nobody is, is, is you know, going out on the ships. No one is selling stuff like this. So if they can get their stuff to the port, boy, everybody will want their stuff. They'll be the number one salesman. They'll have the most money. They'll, their stuff will sell just like that. They can name their price because nobody is sailing at this time of year. And they let that cloud their judgment. That leads us to the second point. You know, when we trust how we feel, Instead of listening to the word of God, you're going to run into some big problems. Listen, I know that we are emotional beings. I know that's how God created us, okay? But when you trust your feelings, instead of trusting what the word of God says, you are going to have big problems. See, these sailors are trusting their feelings, and they're, 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 they're trusting their feelings over their possessions more than they were trust in our, in our terminology today over what, the, what God's word is saying. In their case, it's, it's God's man. It's the man of God. Rather than listening to him, they're trusting with their feelings. They have this feeling. They have this desire deep in them that really wants to get there and sell their stuff. And they're just really passionate about it. Listen, just because you're really passionate about something doesn't mean you're right. Okay, don't trust your feelings. Yeah, I hear people always say all the time, you know, just trust your gut. I don't, I don't even know what that means. Like, what, what part of me is my gut? I, I mean, I get, trust my belly? Trust, I mean, trust your gut. I mean, what, listen, somebody says, just trust your feelings. I don't want to trust my feelings because there's lots of days I don't feel like doing what's right. See, I can't trust my feelings. I need to trust God's words, okay? Uh, I hear people say all the time, you know, trust your first thought. 
Listen, unless that first thought is coming from the Holy Spirit, don't trust that. Trust what God says. Your feelings change, right? Your feelings change. Feelings go up and down. Today you're happy, tomorrow you're sad. You know, today you're angry, tomorrow you're happy. You know, feelings change, but God's word does not change. These guys let their possessions or their desire for possessions and stuff, they let that control their thinking. See, who are you listening to? Are you listening to other people? Or are you listening to stuff? Are you listening to the almighty dollar speaking to you? People who care more about their possessions than they do about the Lord are going to lose both. I-, I want you to hear that. People who care more about their possessions than they care about the Lord are going to lose both. I want you to think about that for a second. <clears throat> so then it goes to verse 12. And it says, the majority, I'm going to read verse 12 again too. It says, and because the harbor was not suitable for wintering, in other words, the harbor where they were at was not a place where they wanted to be. They, they didn't feel like staying there all winter. It wasn't the place they wanted to be. The majority reached a decision to put out to sea from there. If somehow they could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete, the majority came to a decision. Wow, the majority. You know, you are in trouble when the masses control your thinking instead of the Lord, okay? Uh, you know, you've heard the, the joke just because, you know, uh, well, everybody's doing it. Well, if, you know, if everybody's jumping off a cliff, would you jump off the cliff? I mean, I think we know that we can't trust the masses. We can't trust majority. One of the things we've learned in the study of Acts over these, you know, last, you know, few months that we've been studying it is that uh, Paul oftentimes was the single voice against the majority. But Paul was right. And the majority was wrong. I think we see it in American politics all the time. Just because something is the majority doesn't mean that it's God's will. Number three, practical thought for you this morning. See, sometimes God's way is completely different than what the majority says. Sometimes God's way is completely different than what the majority thinks. Because see, often the majority is wrong. Many times the majority is just flat out wrong. The big overwhelming percentage of people this morning that are not, uh, are not at church would tell you, hey, you've got, you've got a lot more things to be doing. You could be doing a lot better things with your time right now. The majority of Americans is not going to church, is not listening to God, is not reading God's word, is not praying every day, is not trying to be obedient to God's word. The majority of people, if you're listening to the majority, you're probably not listening to God. You're better off listening to God, even if you're completely, totally all alone. And it's hard. We're we're social beings. It's one of the hardest things about this this pandemic, right? Is that we like being with other people. We're created for that fellowship, especially as a church body. We want to be with each other and 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 you know encourage each other and hang out with each other and spend time with each other. We're created that way. That's how God made us. And it's hard sometimes when we feel like we're all alone. But if it's God's will, then it's right regardless of what the majority says. And that's hard. When the majority is against you, it makes you feel dumb. It makes you feel wrong. It makes you feel alone and isolated. But let me tell you something. When you are on God's side, you are never, ever alone. You see, these, these sailors said, let's just hope we get there. Let, let's just try it. They voted on it, and the majority won, and they just decided, let's just hope we can make it there. They want to make money so badly, they're ready to throw all caution to the wind and just hope that they can just make an extra buck. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the question this morning for us is really simple. Are you going to listen to God or are you going to listen to your gut? Are you going to listen to God's word or are you going to do what the majority does? Are you going to trade in the safety of God's word instead 
uh, for what some expert told you or on the chance that you might, you know, strike it rich? Are you going to trade in what you know is true and, and trustworthy and, and, and valuable and, and can put your whole life on it? Or are you instead just going to go with the latest scheme or the latest fad, the latest thing, trying to make an extra buck? The bigger question is, who are you going to listen to in 2021? There's going to be a lot of people telling you how to live your life. A lot of voices telling you what you should think and how you should act and what your opinion should be and, and how you should dress and where you should go and what you should do, how you should spend your money. A lot of voices will be telling you. But lots of times those voices lead directly to death. But our God, his voice always leads to life. You may decide to listen to your bank account. You may decide to listen to your own flesh, what you want, or you may decide to listen to Jesus. If you give Jesus your life, you give him your trust, and listen to his voice, and his voice alone, and he will never steer you wrong. You want to have a better year in 2021 than you had in 2020? then I'll give you the sure fire uh, remedy for that. Listen to God's voice. Make sure that he is the voice that you listen to in 2021. Let, let's close with prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, I know that there's a lot of people out there right now going through a lot of things and dealing with a lot of stuff, sicknesses and and uh, problems, and work issues, and financial challenges, and family struggles, and marriage issues, and just, it just, the list goes on, and on, and on. There's a lot of students out there struggling because of this pandemic. There's a lot of families struggling because they can't work. There's a lot of people struggling because they just, they just can't make sense of everything. And right when we thought it would start to get better, Lord, it seems like it's gotten even worse. And, and uh, Lord, we're right back where we started. And, and it just reminds me, Lord, that only you have the answers. Lord, I just pray that our body would listen to you in 2021, that we'd learn how to block out the other voices and just listen to you and hear what you have for us. Lord, give us the courage to stand alone and to listen to you. For it's in your very precious name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone, and we will see you next week. Happy New Year!